where do we even begin applying what we know or what we've learned into sustainable design, right? For example, um, architects who you've been practicing since the 80s, um, architects who you've been, you've been to grad school and then you started Grindwell for 10 plus years. Let's all re rewind a little bit. What if, if I'm in my first year of my career, like, okay, I, I'm a fresh graduate and I really, really want to try going into sustainability. Where do I even start? How do I level up? You know, what's your methodology in leveling up, you know, in this, in this game of sustainability? Yeah, just, just, you know, just, just break down for us a little bit more, you know, if I were to, if I'm interested and would like to start, where can I start? How can I start? Or how did you start, you know, so that people can also maybe imitate our journey in, in shaping ourselves into a, a more sustainable, driven or centric designer or architect. Mm -hmm. Who would like to go first? Okay, so you think first? Oh, okay, me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, um, I think it goes both ways. Um, also, you need to know more and also practice because I think we've been asked like whether you need to read or get certificate or do you just, you know, get your hands dirty and just start doing it. Um, I think it goes, it goes both way because if you, <laughs> but it started with, with a heart. So if you, if you think that, you really wanted to do it, then I think you need to read more about what it is like. And I think mm -hmm. the easiest, to, to me, I think the easiest is not browsing around on the internet, but maybe try to find a well-defined framework for sustainable design. For example, your local green design guidelines could help. I think that provides like a general framework so that you would understand, okay, when we talk about sustainable design fundamentals, we talk about these these very topics and get yourself familiarize yourself with all those things. And once you know that, um, maybe just get, take an exam and get a certificate because you have been reading all of that, even though it's, it's not that important, but I think it, it gives, it lifts you up a little bit, you know, okay, now I, I have finished this, then you get your hands dirty and you practice. Because I think um, theories are, are totally different than, than practice. I and mean, when you practice, you might feel that you would need to read, go and read some more about the topics that you're interested in. I think that's how, at least for me, that's how I sort of developed the knowledge because it is fluid. It changes all the time. Technologies change, you know, even though the why is still there, but technologies change all the time. So get yourself um, ready for all these things. Yeah, this reminds me so much of the metaphor architects who are seen to use the octopus <laughs> in, in a circle <laughs> thing. <you know? laughs> okay, so Sydney, what do you think? Yeah, what would you like to add on to this? You need to unmute your mic, yeah? Uh, okay, that's uh, what you need. Yes. Uh, yeah, got it. Uh, okay. Okay. What would I say to somebody who wants to actually get into designing and building more sustainably? Mm -hmm. I would, I mean, if I'm a young architect today coming out of an institution and I'm going to set up my practice, I would say that first, one of the things I would look for is a mentor. Mm -hmm. You know, because many things you can learn academically yeah. and there are things that you learn by doing and there are things that you learn by imbibing mm -hmm. because the main aspect I find interesting in life is learning how to learn, you know, because once you learn how to learn, it well, you keep learning all the time and you have, you need different mediums and different ways of learning that you can have because as human beings we are wired mm -hmm. to uh, learn by storytelling mm -hmm. we are uh, you know the first thousands of years we just sat around a campfire and people were acting out and demonstrating and talking about going deer hunting or being running away from the elephant or whatever <laughs> and that the narrative of the world when the tone and the texture and the language, it creates images in your head. You see, television is very successful, but at the same time, the imagery that you see in the television, if it's with soundless, it doesn't go anywhere. And only sound is So the mind creates images and these images can come in many, many ways. I feel that a lot of sustainability issues are because we, we actually compartmentalize how we learn. You say, okay, when we are in academic performance thing or a setup, <coughs> there are 
certain modules to learn and our interest and the way it's packaged and given to us and the competitiveness and other things, it's very good because it gives you a structure. But then when you're practicing, personally, we hardly ever say no to a project because of two reasons. No project is, you know, bad or good. Sometimes you can do something with this. Sometimes you can do something else with that. And look at every project for as a challenge to say, okay, last project I was able to deal with water or with climate. And you hold that in your mind and you amplify it into the next thing, which maybe you have met. Maybe you have done a storeroom now and tomorrow you're going to do a public toilet block and day after tomorrow it's a school. But between the storeroom and the public toilet block and the school, there's a constant learning process, you see. And that combined with the academia and having mentors and mentors not in the sense of the normal conventional traditional mentor who teaches you when, but actually you mentors in very, very different ways. Like right now, I'm learning from all of you. You are kind of mentoring me to look at life from another angle. And because of that, the next interaction I have, I will use this learning and awareness to perceive much more, to absorb much more. So in a way, life is, as a designer is only so much can be done academically, but the rest is exposure and experience. Mm. And exposure and experience builds awareness Awareness builds sensitivity, sensitivity builds understanding and understanding makes you more tolerant to constantly keep evolving. You know, I've had clients that I would say, oh my God, why me? What, what did I do in my last life to have this karma? <laughs> okay. But no, it's true. You have clients from hell and your clients are wonderful, but one in 50 is wonderful. The rest is all learning processes because mm. We as human beings are the same. What I recognize in the other person as being completely mad, I recognize it because I have it in me. Otherwise I would be blind to it. You know, I don't understand what the birds are saying because I don't have that language in me. It's the same thing. So when I'm, I always tell young people, do not think that design is in the office and building is on the construction site. And the clients are people that you meet for a few hours a week to discuss design. Your client may be the one you're designing for, but all the clients around, the neighborhood in which you're designing, the, you know, the people who are going to be building the building, the people who are going to be on the street just driving through and looking at your building, these are all your clients because each one is perceiving and is being impacted by what you put in. And so somebody may pay the bill for your design work, but there are a lot of people who are paying the bills for what you don't design mm -hmm. and you don't pay attention. And that is where sustainability comes in. Sustainability comes in not having barriers, but sustainability comes in being able to move through barriers, to permeate and move through all these barriers back and forth and have this kind of diffuse diffusion between you as a designer, you as a person, you as a person who is actually interacting with the client and make that process, whether you are starting your own office, whether you're starting to be more sustainable, to be a sustainability advisor or a sustainability designer, or you are just going to specialize into somebody who's going to help other architects to make their buildings more sustainable, or you're going to work with the government to evaluate people's buildings or whatever, each level of sustainability, the little interaction that you bring in becomes richer and deeper because it's diffuse. Your learning process is completely diffuse and you never stop with one project. Every project is one more step in the ladder to keep going up and uh, laterally. Another thing that I tell them is look at the people who build because I don't know how familiar you are with India. 90% of people in India are employed in the unorganized sector, which is basically agriculture and construction. Mm -hmm. There is no formalized training or practice in construction. People, when they lose their farm because there was a, no rain or flood or whatever, they become migrants and they become construction people. 
after two years of carrying things on their head, they become a helper to a mason and then they become that. So these people just learn on the job. They do not know and nobody bothers about them. So no matter how good your design is, how well you want to make sure that you don't use high embodied energy material. Finally, when it comes down to how construction is done, there's a lot of waste, there's a lot of misinterpretation and there's a lot of total lack of understanding due to an ignorance that comes from lack of opportunity to education. And we can only do so much in the office and we can only do so much in terms of setting up the processes of construction. But finally, it comes down to the lowest common denominator of the person who's putting the sand in the cement, the person who's cutting the wood, the person who's actually welding the steel, how much waste, how much energy, how perfectly the job is done is going to impact how the building is going to be, how mm -hmm. it's going to weather and how it's going to be maintained. Mm -hmm. So I always tell the young architects, spend more and more time on the construction site, interact with these people, learn from them so that they can learn from you. And true sustainability is actually an integration of the entire supply, supply chain from the education to the practice, to the client, to the industry, to the last person on the construction site. That's how it is. Yeah.